Listen to this number, $3 billion is the amount of money that was in cyber fraud geared towards seniors in our country. That averages about $17,500 per victim. It's why Ryan Green decided to build a company and make a mission to help protect seniors online. Glad you're with us, Emory alum. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me today. Well, thanks for the work you're doing to, to protect these older generations online. As more and more are becoming regular technology users, it's actually opening them up to uh, being victims of fraud. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I noticed about four or five years ago that family visits were turning into technology support sessions. And the scary world was emails, text messages, phone calls, just every opportunity, just what I refer to as the bad guys trying to target older adults. And the, the really disappointing element to all of that is oftentimes it starts with the older adult, but it affects the entire family. Sure, because uh, sometimes the family is the financial support as well for a senior as well. Yes, it's a total ripple effect. So talk about why it's so important for this middle generation, maybe people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, to step in the gap and be helpful in protecting uh, our older loved ones online. Yeah, so we refer to them as the sandwich generation. So many of them have responsibilities with younger family members, their own children, and now they're starting to take care of their older family members, parents and grandparents. And there's nothing intuitive about a digital world for individuals who grew up in an analog world. And what I mean by analog world is typically receiving mail, typically receiving uh, a physical newspaper. Mm -hmm. uh, when you unlock the internet, when you start removing some of the obstacles that come along with scams and offering something of a safety blanket to older adults, it unlocks so much more usage of technology. Their ability to uh, find doctors online, mm -hmm. telehealth, telemedicine, not have to spend so much using coupons and digital resources for e-commerce, for example. So you have uh, some very simple ways that we can step in the gap, because yes. um, it can feel a little overwhelming, you know, it, about like how do we protect them, what, what is the best thing for us to know so they can know it too. So walk us through maybe your top three or four must knows to help protect the people in our lives. Yeah, I, I, I'd say that there's absolutely just a incredible opportunity to create an ecosystem of support. And what that means to us is recognizing that offering older adults tools that just help them stay organized, because that's actually the first pitfall. If you're not organized, if there's any sense of confusion or embarrassment with asking for help, it actually unlocks all of the problems. Mm. So the first thing that we always say is when you receive an email, be suspicious. And that's okay. Just having a, a lens for protecting yourself look at who sent it to you, look at the letters and symbols that come after that at symbol, that A with the swirly sign. Look at the grammar, the spelling. Is this an email that you typically would receive from a loved one or a family member or a friend? Or is this something that's out of the blue? Do you remember making that purchase? Are you actually expecting a renewal? Those are the mm -hmm. elements that we first say before anything just to look for. Okay, updating technology is really important too. Mm -hmm. Yes, every two to three years, think about looking for a new device. And there are some super affordable options out there, but the big thing is technology does become outdated. We think about a 1975 Ford and how long that would last for, but technology actually expires a lot faster. And so when you use older technology, older hardware, it does leave you susceptible to different types of viruses and easier effect, uh, easier attempts at scamming and, and sort of some of that peril. I think about my grandparents, how trusting they are and how that can make them easily to be manipulated. And, and think about how much they, they really crave connectivity too. So whether it's Facebook online, they wanna share pictures, they wanna share names and, and where their grandkids live. Talk about why that is really important for us to talk through with our loved ones. Okay, so I am not an alarmist. I'm a huge fan of some of the new technologies out about uh, around AI. With that said, Tools are now coming out for the bad guys to be able to take that information that is online on your social accounts and capture it at scale. Taking that information and then populating emails, text messages, phone calls that sound like loved ones, 
pretty much everything that goes out into that digital ecosystem onto social media, any of that content can actually be captured, tailored, and then sent to you in an email. And so it goes back to start from a place of knowing, or at least taking those steps to know that each piece of email or text that you're receiving has a lens of precaution. And even having the conversation that that technology exists to duplicate a voice mm -hmm. or for someone to take a pet's name or a grandchild's name and then use that to sound like they know you. Yes, I, I mean, we know the behavior out there is we all have a few passwords that we use. And the questions and prompts for, from financial institutions to telehealth companies, they're all the same ones. What's the name of your first dog? What school did you go to? What high school did you meet your loved one at? Whatever it might be, all that information, if you put it out there, it can be utilized against you. And so it just comes back to thinking through what you're putting out there, being a little more cautious, but also making sure that those security settings are updated so that you can put more information out there, not a lot, but know that it's only going towards the individuals in your inner circle, your family members, your close friends. And then making sure the, the settings on social media are, are set to protect the people we love as well. Yes, so take a second, next time you visit a loved one, just update some of those settings. Make sure that they're not sharing universally or ev quote unquote everybody. Just take that moment to make sure that they're sharing a comfortable amount of information. Yeah, set most. it on that friends and family yes. setting. That's that's the place you want to be. So you studied at Emory, you built Go Go Quincy, you have this uh, as kind of this big global mission now, but it started from a very personal place. Yeah, um, so I'm no longer a kid, but I am an only child. And so no cousins, no siblings, and throughout the pandemic especially, the company's been around for about three years, a, there was a moment where my grandfather came out of his bedroom with a yellow legal pad with 17 computer tasks. He's like, can you help me? And it was in that moment that I recognized that there was no support system for older adults to just feel like they had a grandchild on demand. I'm there for my grandfather, but there's so many older adults out there that do not have that support system. And that was a mission that I really just, I got excited by. Yeah. As you've been diving into it, are you surprised even how vast the need is? Yes. Um, I, I think at every turn we've been surprised. It starts with technology comfort. And when you have the, the, the safety blanket wrapped around you, when you know that you can call someone or you know who to call in a moment of need, and you have those systems in place, it actually unlocks the best of the internet. So many things that we take for granted, being able to buy things online, saving 20, 25% when you buy online versus brick and mortar. Mm. Uh, when you are looking for a doctor, right? Telehealth, telemedicine. We've actually even recognized that our users are utilizing technology even more than they were previously because they know that they have that support network in a moment of need. That's really good because it can be the most important tool. It can also be the deepest pitfall. Double-edged sword. Depending. Yes. And then speak to, you know, why, again, it's so critical for this younger generation to be locked into this, because I think we have all heard the message that maybe the older generation is more vulnerable when it comes to online scams, but really the need for the younger generation to be aware of that and to know that they can take steps to prevent it. Yeah, I mean, so many of our family members have taken care of us through the course of our lives. And whether you're a sandwich child, uh, whether you just have older loved ones that you're responsible for, for these individuals that have grown up in a world where technology was not the forefront of their day to day, if they have that at AOL email address, that at Yahoo email address, at sbcglobal.net email address, odds are they could use a helping hand. No doubt. Where can people go for more information? So we are totally available, gogoquincy.com. There's a free tier as well as an unlimited tier that has been designed to be totally reasonable. Um, but we've also never said no to someone. So as far as we're concerned, we are absolutely a resource to help with organizing those usernames, helping you navigate a scam. We oftentimes rely on antivirus. That's no longer a bulletproof experience. Mm -hmm. So having just something like a grandchild on demand is where we have positioned ourselves to be there for anyone who needs us. Um, we also can help educate as well as just 
be there to talk you through a challenge or a problem. That's awesome. Grandchild on, the, on demand. I love that. Yeah. Great to meet you, Ryan. Thanks for all you're doing. Thank you so much for having me.